Hi, my name's Nancy Shank. I'm an audiologist, teacher of the deaf, and auditory verbal therapist. I work with children with cochlear implants and their families in Colorado. I am happy to share with you some of what I've learned from working with children with implants and their families. The purpose of this video is to guide you in helping your child get the most from his cochlear implants. Your child now has access to a variety of environmental, speech, and musical sounds. In this video, you'll observe techniques and activities for teaching your child to attach meaning to these sounds for learning to listen and talk. Where's the clock, Where's the clock going? You'll also hear from parents and children who've had their implants for a few years. You're helping your child's brain develop as you engage in meaningful activities and conversations and encourage him to listen and talk throughout the day. How old are you? Five. So if you, how many, if you, were, if you were a lizard, how many more years would you live? About two more fives. You're right. Two more fives are what? What's five plus five? Ten. Oh, yeah. The technology in the nucleus cochlear implant is state-of-the-art, but the e real art six. happens when listening e becomes e a way of six. life. Here are some basic ideas to consider as your child starts to listen. Learn and become comfortable with the process for encouraging your child to listen to learn language. I call it the five E's. The five E's are one, expose, two, expect, three, experience, four, expand, and five, express. One, expose your child to a sound. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, uh. Ba, 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 ba. Expect a vocal or verbal response. The point of this is to give your child practice in saying sounds or words. Three, experience, explore, and experiment with a toy or prop that represents a sound or word. Encourage your child to associate sounds and words with people and objects in real life, toys, pictures, and books. This leads to symbolic understanding of sounds, words, and language. Listen as Tony, who's had his cochlear implant for one month, changes his vocalization from ma to ba to match the sound he heard as he's exploring the toy bus. That's a bus and that's a bus. Expand your child's language by feeding in more information than you would expect him to be saying. We do this to set him up for using more advanced language in the future. One way you can do this is to sing a favorite song. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The babies on the bus go wee, 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 wee. You also expand language when you label what you see. Notice how Tony uses two syllables with vowels when saying baby. This is a beginning stage for saying the word baby. Is it the baby? <gasps> I saw it. <laughs> baby, yes, baby. Expressive language happens when your child remembers and spontaneously uses sounds and words. In the next clip, Tony says ba when he sees the picture of the bus in his sound book. Let's find it. Let's find it. Good job, Tony. Sydney, who is now in middle school, listens as her mom explains to her how she learned to listen when she first got her cochlear implant as a baby. Every week we had some focus of something we were practicing. At the very beginning it was just sounds, like ah, Ooh, yeah, babies just play with sounds. It was a lot of work to have to learn ah and ooh, e, and then, you know, words. So 
we didn't just play, we played, but always learned. We were always listening and hearing. As you start on this listening adventure, it helps to work in partnership with a professional who has knowledge and skills in developing listening and spoken language. This might be a listening and spoken language specialist, an audiologist, speech therapist, or a teacher of the deaf. He or she will coach and guide you and develop individualized and clear goals based on your child's communication needs and your priorities. Be sure to understand the goals and rationale behind the activities so you can integrate these goals into daily living. When you actively participate in therapy sessions, you learn how to make sound and interactions meaningful and understand what to practice and reinforce. Remember that every child and family is unique and rates of progress vary from child to child. If your child's not making the progress you would expect, ask yourself some questions. Are my child's cochlear implants optimally set and functioning? Is my child developing a strong auditory foundation? You heard it, huh? I hear it too. Do I make sounds and speech in the environment meaningful? Can you move the, my green gingerbread man one orange, please? Do I create a listening environment by turning off competing background noise or music? Is my child with someone who encourages listening, talking, and thinking during all waking hours? Am I positive, clear, and consistent in using spoken communication with my child. The desert is his what? Habitat. Habit habitat? Yeah. He, Do I lovingly is. stretch my child out of his comfort zone while still setting him up for success? Do I encourage and expect appropriate behavior from my child? Notice how Tony's grandma communicates with him that banging on the table is not an appropriate thing to do. Oh, that's loud, Tony, loud. Do I have a cheerful and positive <laughs> attitude about listening, talking, and learning? Am I seeking professional guidance from related fields if my child seems to have challenges in addition to deafness? Once we started auditory verbal therapy, there were focuses each week that we continued at home. So every week at home, I would practice every day some way or another part of what we were doing and then the whole day just became um, just talking everything became an emphasis this is the door everything was something to talk about and hear as a family dinner we usually talk about like maybe school schoolwork grades homework and maybe like other things that we like to talk about or joke around or do other sorts of things that we like to do. When we start, started when Darian was younger, we were real careful about not having background noises, radios off, TVs off, so we can really focus on each other as a family. We're finding now that he's got older and his uh, listening is so acute that we can play a little music in the background and it does not distract him. Dinner time's a great time to have those discussions about school, about grades, about learning. It also provides a, a great atmosphere for uh, actually some auditory training or um, auditory learning where you can talk about, hey, we're eating green beans. Green beans are green, they're a vegetable, and talk about them growing in the ground and farmers. So it's a great time for a learning environment too. So we used that a lot when Darian was younger. How do you teach your child to listen? Begin to build a foundation for listening through awareness to sound. When a child's first stimulated with a cochlear implant, his hearing age with the implant is zero. He doesn't know what sound is, and he doesn't know the meaning of sounds. Base your expectations on how a newborn infant listens and talks. La, 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 la. Boom, boom. A child with normal hearing has several months of listening, playing with his voice, and developing receptive language before talking in words and phrases. Some examples of activities for awareness to sounds include 
listening walks. Take a listening walk outside or inside your home and call attention to sounds in the environment. Point to your ear and say, listen, I hear something. What is it? Listen, I hear something. A car. What is it? Then point to the source of the sound. A car. It's a car. Beep, beep. Tony. Calling game. Play the calling game to encourage your child to respond to his name. But avoid the temptation to test whether your child's hearing and call his name only when you need his attention or if you're specifically playing the calling game. Tony! Tony! Oh, I hear somebody! Hi. Who's Hi. that? Hi. It's Nancy! Hi. Hi, Nancy! Once your child learns to respond to his name, expect him to turn when you call him during daily life. Tony, I put it in the bowl. To encourage your child to call others, use pictures or toy people and play a game where he calls different people in the family. Papa. Oh, there's Papa. Notice, is he using a louder or softer voice when calling? Knock, knock game. In the knock, knock game, someone knocks on the door. Alert your child. I hear that. Then open the door. Listen as Tony spontaneously answers the question, what should we do? He says, open, using two syllables with vowels while matching the rhythm and pitch of the word. Was somebody knocking, yeah? Somebody, should, what should we do? Uh -uh. Open. Open. <gasps> open. This helps your child begin to listen for sounds in daily life and to realize that we hear sounds even when we don't see someone. Reverse the game and let your child do the knocking. Knock, knock. Open the door. Open. Knock, knock. Open. Hi. Hi. How do you encourage your child to start talking? Hearing's really important to the development of spoken language. Voice quality develops naturally when babies hear and imitate the voices and speech of those around them. This is called auditory self-monitoring or auditory feedback. We encourage a child with cochlear implants to say what he hears and hear what he says. Okay, should we do it again? Again, okay. Push. A child's auditory feedback loop develops when he actively listens to sounds and responds by vocalizing or talking. Here are some activities to encourage vocal play. String beads. As you push beads along a string, model different vowel vocalizations. Listen to how Tony imitates the vowel ah while matching the length of the sound and the pitch. Again. Down. Down. It came down. How about if we go this way? Ah, 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 ah. The down. The down. Down. Oh, you wanted to go down. Down. Uh, down. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. Ooh. Oh. 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 Yeah, oh. Oh. Notice how Tony learns the meaning of the word pull and uses auditory self-monitoring to change his speech to p in trying to say the word pull. You have to say p, 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 p. Good. Pull. A fun game for encouraging your child to use a loud and soft voice is the wake up game. Ready, ready for doing Papa and Baba, they're all going to sleep. Let's go. 
Slip. Can Tony call Papa? Papa. Oh, there's Papa. He can walk up too. <laughs> Let's put him away. Say hi, Papa. Hi, Tony. Okay. All done. Okay. Mama. Mama. Good job. There is Mama. Peekaboo is another game to encourage your child to use vowels and voice patterns such as duration and pitch. Bye. Peekaboo. Animal and vehicle sounds are used to develop speech and symbolic language. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Initially, your child may not imitate the sounds or words exactly as he heard them. A child needs time to listen and to practice before speech sounds are made perfectly. Ow. Cow, that's right. Some sounds naturally develop earlier or later than other sounds. Listen to Tony say ow for cow. He's not yet developed the k sound in words. Go, 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 go. Who is that? Ow. Cow. It's a cow. If a child doesn't vocalize to an auditory cue, there are several strategies you could try, such as get closer to the microphone of the implant. Make the task easier and more familiar. Use more motivating materials or toys. Slow down and allow thinking time. Incorporate siblings or friends as models. Follow your child's interests. You'll hear Tony's grandma following his lead and using words to describe what interests him. She's feeding in the nun sound, which is the sound the truck makes. Tony changes his vocalization from ba to na to match what he heard. Ba, ba, ba. Na, 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 na. Activities that involve music and singing are natural and enriching for all children. Incorporate music throughout the day. Sing interesting songs and finger plays. Play children's CDs on your iPod in the car. And sing along as you go. Where is Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? Here I am. Or watch music videos or TV programs. Later, as your child becomes a more sophisticated listener, she may enjoy playing music. Music was one avenue we used to teach Darren to talk because he loved it so much and there's so much you can learn. And he had just a natural tendency. I mean, he could keep beat and bass uh, to pretty much any type of music. So we used it as one inroad since he enjoyed it so much. It was a fun way to learn. I do listen to music on my iPod. I usually have an audio cable that connects to my iPod and connects to my processor. And then if I don't have that or I lost it or something, I would have like a like a headset, but that would cover my ears and my processors. And that would, like the noise and the voice and the music would go through my uh, little microphone on top of my processor. And I would plug it in my iPod and listen to music. There are many opportunities for your child to hear and practice a specific speech sound as he enjoys activities centered on that sound. Here's Tony a few months later. Notice how he's saying the consonant t when motivated by specific toys selected for that sound. It's inside something. I hear it. I hear it. Okay. Turn. turn. Let's turn it together. Turn. Turn. Okay, let's turn it. I hear it. Although it may seem like the emphasis is only on learning to listen, your child's also learning language. Integrate listening, talking, language, and thinking. 
here are some ways you could do this. Talk with your child about what you're doing. Coco is nice. Look at Coco. He likes to be petted. Perceive the world through the eyes and the ears of your child, and then provide the words for what he's thinking. Nose. Uh, eyes, that's right. Coco has eyes. Arf, arf. That's right, Coco's back. Initially talk in short phrases with repetitive but natural language. In the sky, airplane flies there. Functional words such as up, more, open, all gone, and bye-bye often develop first. Where are you going? Are you going up the stairs? Uh -uh. Up, yeah, up the stairs. Come on, let's go up. Come in, up the stairs. Uh, um. Papa. Uh, um. Let's go up the stairs. Uh, um. up. Uh, um. uh, up. As your child continues to progress, raise your expectations based on how long he's had his implants and his chronological age. She's gray, she can like gray and white. So what's that mean? She's older. So Ruby's a little older. Here are some things you can talk about with your child. In this case, Gracie and Landon you are having apples yeah, and bananas for a snack. Both sister stuff. and brother yeah. received right. a cochlear implant Try recently. They transitioned easily from hearing aids to a cochlear implant plus hearing aid because of an emphasis on listening and spoken right, language before they were implanted. They're talking about the category name. They're talking about component parts, the seeds, the skin, the stem. They're talking about what do you do with it? You peel it, you slice it. Okay, and what do we have on the banana? That's the stem. That's the skin. And on the apple, we have a stem and we can cut and slice the apple. You guys want You could also talk about how it tastes. What's it taste like? Tastes like it banana. Tastes like <laughs> What's the texture? It's kind of chewy. Kind of chewy? Maybe how it's the same or different than something else. Or you could relate it to your child's experiences, a story, or how about a song? I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas, I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas, I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas, I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. It's really important for your child's auditory memory to continue to get longer. One way to build your child's auditory memory is by playing direction games. These games teach your child to remember a series of verbal directions. This is an important skill in the classroom and in real life. You and your child can play age-appropriate games with a listening twist. Make any game or interaction a listening activity by expecting your child to listen, remember, and learn new vocabulary. Two yellows. Two yellows. Okay, move your yellow gingerbread man to two yellows. Where's two yellows? Good job. Gracie, Simon says take three steps forward two steps to the right, turn around, jump up and down, and run straight forward. One, two, three, one, two, and turn around, and jump up, and do it ahead. Four. Four. One, two, three, four. Good job, you ready? Say the last sound you hear in big. B. 
Good. 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 Good job. One. Say the middle sound you hear in town. <laughs> so what's the middle sound? Ow. Yeah. Good job. And you do get the hot dog prize. The here person have a hat. Yes, my pers the, my person does have a hat. Close your eyes. Right no on. peeking. Landon, Gracie. I'm over here. <laughs> I got feet. I'm looking for foot. I got man. I have men. I'm looking for man. Incorporate siblings in games to motivate your child and to strengthen the sibling bond. The next game shows a way to encourage an older child to listen and remember the directions for a game. She's playing with her older sister, mom, and therapist. Players need to pay attention and remember what everyone's saying. So what's our category? Uh, things you use to make an ice cream sundae. Okay. All right. So Bailey, you want to start? Yes. A caramel toppings. Okay. Um, butterscotch topping. Fudge topping. Ice cream. Bananas. Cherries. Nuts. Whipped cream. Yo yogurt. Uh, sprinkles. Sprinkles. Uh, chocolate sauce. Mm -hmm. A cherry. Oh, oh, oh bing. Bing. Helping your child to develop vocabulary on a daily basis is one of the most important things you can do to improve his spoken language and reading potential. For example, if you're working on understanding and saying the words associated with foods and eating, here are some things you could do. Unload the dishwasher together. It's a knife. Knife and a spoon. Teaspoon. Can you give me a plate? That's a big plate. Can you give me a big plate? Oh, one plate, one. Little plate. Thank you. What is that? It's a fork. That's Baba's bowl. Yeah, that's a bowl. Have a play picnic or tea party. Can you give Nancy a cup? I'm going to pour, pour, pour. You want to stir too? Mix, mix. <laughs> stir, stir. Mix, mix. Stir, stir. Stir, stir. stir. That's right. Play in a pretend kitchen. Should we wash the dishes? Tony, um, can I have a drink? I'm thirsty. Oh, thank you. I'm going to have a drink. Mmm, drink. It's so good. Yeah, I like to drink. Sort pretend food. Oh, there you go. Is there bread? Oh, wait. What is this? Carrot. Carrot, okay. Can you put that on the yellow big plate, please? Oh, okay. Here, here. Which one is this? Vegetables. Uh-huh. Pineapple. Well, that's an orange. It's just fruit. Food. And this one is? Donut. <laughs> that's a donut, I know. It's a dessert. Dessert. Name or sort food in the pantry. You might talk to your child about the shapes and sizes. Let's see what shape they are. Let's see. <laughs> this one is, oh, it's a hexagon one. Let's take that one. Do you want to hold that? And what shape is that? Oh, square. that's the square. We'll take that one, too. Oh, and this one, oh. What is that? The rectangle one. Okay, you can you carry that? We'll take it and we'll play the game with that. How about a hexagon? What shape is that? Hexagon. Hexagon. Can you put a square on your plate? What shape is that? 
square. And um, let's see, can we put a large circle? What's, what shape is that? Large. A large what? Circle. Circle. Discuss what's in your child's lunchbox. Would you like a chip? Or you want chicken? Oh, chicken. 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 It is your chicken. Look, it's a drumstick. Children with normal hearing typically learn nine to ten new words every day. So be sure to continue teaching your child new words each day. Written words are the symbols for words we say and hear. You can develop your child's vocabulary, language, auditory memory, and literacy skills by reading and acting out books. You can start acting out books with babies by using toy props. Use books with repetitive language that's meaningful to his age and stages of development. Repetitive phrases in books help children to predict what's coming next and to develop auditory memory and language. In the next video, Tony changes his vocalizations from a brown bear's growling sound to two syllables in trying to say red listen, bird. Listen, Tony, listen, listen. Tony. I see a red bird looking at me. Ah! <laughs> What is that, Tony? Uh-uh. What is it? Uh-uh. Uh -uh. It's a bird. Notice how he's able to select the yellow duck from a set of four objects. Quack, quack, quack. Can you give me the yellow duck? Quack, 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 quack. Bye-bye, yellow duck. Oh, thank you. This shows he's developing the receptive language for these sounds and words. When he sees the duck, he uses expressive language by saying quack quack. Yellow duck. Oh, listen, 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 listen. I see a yellow duck looking at me. I see, I see a yellow duck looking at me. Quack, quack, quack. quack. Learn nursery rhymes. Children enjoy learning nursery rhymes by acting out the silly stories and practicing and remembering the rhythmical sentences. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Whoa! All the king horses and all the king men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. As your child gets older and before he can read, reinforce memory and teach complex language structures using dramatic play and props. This will help him when he begins to write stories because his written language will reflect his spoken language. This is the net that wrapped around the turtle, that slid into the pond, that swallowed the snake, that ate the fish, that chased after the frog, that ate the fly, that crawled out of the water. And how did the frog get away? <gasps> jump, frog, jump! Experience books. Develop experience books or posters with your child. This encourages him to discuss his ideas with others. Help your child create a story using five story elements. You could include setting, when and where, characters, main idea, events, and of course a conclusion. My mommy came, my daddy came, my sister and I went on a summer vacation to Hawaii. We saw, and she sang flowers and we saw a man showing fire and a hula dancing the hula. We saw interesting food, we had lots of fun, the end. You might extend this by helping your child to write a story with chapters. This is chapter two, playing with, playing balls with Ruby. Chapter three, this is chapter three, um, Ruby surprises. As your child gets older, 
create a more elaborate experience story. Develop and read nonfiction as well as fiction stories. Turn his day way on more. Because he needs the special UV rays, right? What's that? He needs the, the special rays from the light for his coat and his skin. So we had to, he needs daylight too, even though he likes to run around at night, he still needs the light of the day to be healthy. Watch as we go on a fun adventure with Jagger to learn more about dinosaurs. This is followed by writing and reading about the experience. All right, Jagger, do you know where we are today? Um, dinosaur world. Okay, well, what do you want to do first? Should we go to the, the sculptures? Okay. Right here. This is iguanodon. Here's one claw is kind of. So it kind of it's the sharpest claw that they have. It's the defense claw. Good idea. All right. Ah, so it looks like we might want to dig up number one, the skull. Number one is the skull. Wow. Well, I think we should dig up here. You know what, Jagger and Beth? There are, there are some footprints over here. We could go over and look at the footprints. All right, let's go check let's them go out. Let's do that. What's the green? The green is a crocodile. These are actually animals. So these are a list of the animals, and these are a list of the activities that the animals are doing. Um, so what's, so what's work for? What kind is that? Ornith, ornithopod? Oh, you're flying? Okay. Hey, you know what? Let's go write a book about it, you guys. You want to? Yeah. All right, perfect. let's go. Come on. Let's go, Jack. Should we name your book? Dinosaurs at Dinosaur Ridge. Okay, Dinosaurs at Dinosaur Ridge. We followed them to a Triceratops statue and a Iguanodon statue, before, which were pretty hard and big. Oh wait, how, should we just say two large dinosaurs maybe? Two large dinosaur statues? Yeah. First we went to the dinosaurs. Should we say next we went to the sand pit? Mm, should we say something about, how, do we just walk normally like humans do? Or how did we follow the prints? Um, by doing, by the tool showed us what to do. We followed the tool on the graph and we pretended like we were the actual animals? Yeah. I started reading chapter books in first grade, um, like Junie B. Jones and um, stuff like that. And in second grade, I read so much in first grade and my mom and my parents read with me so much that I started reading the Harry Potter series in second grade, and that's a big step. Harry Potter is like fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade reading level, and so what really helped me is my parents would read with me like every night, and they would read me stories. And in fourth and fifth grade, she was in the gifted and talented program um, for, for reading. reading and writing. It's for people who are gifted and talented, and um, only me and another student in my class in fourth and fifth grade went to gifted and talented, and it was really fun because we did higher level books and we went at a faster pace than the regular class. You may be wondering about the future. Here's what you can expect to do in the future. Engage in more complex conversations with your child. Ankylosaurus have a big club that can take down two Tyrannosaurus at the same time. And include family members and friends. What type is Henry? Um, leopard gecko. Practice talking on the telephone once your child has learned to understand spoken language through listening. He's black and he's white and brown and gray. Encourage your child to try out a variety of activities and to engage in social events with other children. Sydney and Darian were in the first Start Listening video done 10 years ago. 
listen as they share their tips. Listening helps me communicate with my friends, my family, my teammates for track because I have a track team, teachers, and all other people I like to talk to. I got asked like a lot like by kids, by other people, what's that thing on your head because they have no idea what that is. So one thing I would tell you guys is that don't get so insecure about like if you get asked that a lot. I like going to the movies. It's normal because it's just you and your friends. You might just be able just to go to the movies and listen to the movie and actually learn what the movie's talking about. I feel normal, I feel like a normal kid. I have sleepovers, I have a lot of friends. We're not really different, it's, it's the same thing. I don't feel different at all. Each stage of listening and learning is filled with rewards and opportunities for growth. To summarize, have fun. Follow your child's lead while still being focused on your goals. Keep feeding in language by optimizing moments throughout every day. Be positive and consistent. Model the importance of listening, talking, thinking, and telling stories. Read with your child every day and talk about what you read. Provide real life experiences so your child learns about the world in which we live. Build a strong team based on mutual trust and open communication. For additional resources and ideas on how to help your child at various stages and ages, check out www.cochlearamericas.com backslash hope. We wish you the very best as your child learns to listen and talk. <laughs>